Hey, this is John Frenet, the co-host of the Maryland Crabs, and I am here today with a Maryland Crab Cake for your listening pleasure. What's a crab cake? It's not quite a full episode, it's just a little snippet. Stay tuned and check it out. And make sure you check us out on themarylandcrabs.com. You can follow us on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast or find us on Facebook at the Maryland Crabs Podcast. And don't forget, subscribe, rate us, iTunes, go there now. And with us today, we've got a surprise guest. It is Mr. John Tesh, who will be performing this Wednesday at the Rams Head on stage. Good afternoon, and thanks for giving us a chance to chat before you come to Annapolis. Many people know you from entertainment tonight, but they really don't know you as a musician. And you got to start really, really young. When I was a kid growing up on Long Island, um, I was a real sort of scrawny, not very interesting kid that uh, I played you know, uh, sports that were not really recognized like l- lacrosse and soccer back in the day. And, and, um, I wasn't, um, I wasn't a very attractive kid, <laughs> but so my parents were very strict and they ma- they made sure that, uh, I had to play piano for like two hours before I, before I went out, um, to play with the other kids. And then they made sure I was in the band and the orchestra. And everything. So I was really a band geek. And back in the days when that was not cool, you know, now it's cool, but back then right. it was not, it was not. So uh, I spent a lot of time alone. I have two older sisters that are 11 and, and 13 years older than me. And so um, I think this happens with only only children where you just start creating things, you know. Uh, and so I would create shows for the neighbor, neighbor kids on like Halloween. And I had an Easter show and, and I had an 8 millimeter camera. So I, I did a thing where my cat went to Mars. And, and so I was always into – I've always been a big fan of – what, what can I do in the morning here all throughout the day and have a finished product uh, at the end of the day? I think that's uh, that's why I ended up in local news. Uh, I think it's why I ended up um, in, you know, in, in music. And, and also I really, I've always enjoyed making, making little films. So when we go, when we perform at Ramset, it's, it's, yeah, we, we're bringing a big screen with us and we've got, uh, you know, all kinds of old videos of me, you know, scoring music for the for the, the Tour de France bike race, or the you know, there's an Olympic uh, Russian pairs team that that skates to one of our songs live on the you know on the on the stage, and we're hooked up with Facebook Live, and and you know we're going back to the days when I did cartoon music for Howie Mandel, and and so um, it really has it's really more of a performance, not that anything I do is art, but it's more of a what you think of as a performance art piece, um, and so uh, I enjoyed I enjoy it all, I really do. I, I think the one thing I didn't enjoy was whenever I was sitting there reading a teleprompter, um, I always felt like I was sort of uh, um, phoning it in, you know, uh, because it doesn't really take, I mean, listen, it takes talent to look nice on TV, I guess, but but it doesn't take that much talent to read words as they're going by. Uh, and so I, I, I think part of feeling unfulfilled during those years just made me concentrate more on the music. Well, that's kind of neat. I mean, you talked about, you know, being creative as a kid and everything else, and you started like at age six or something, and you had instructors that were instructors at Juilliard, right? Yeah, they were, um, they actually I mean, lived on Long Island and I was obviously too young to, uh, to go to, uh, to Juilliard, uh, and probably not good enough to get into Juilliard, but these teachers, <clears throat> there was a trumpet, um, teacher and also a piano teacher. And, and they, they taught me the way they would, they would te- teach people at the, at the school. So back in the day, I mean, now, you know, if they'll teaching, I would teach piano differently, um, to somebody where I teach them to develop an ear first, but back then it was they teach you how to read, right? Which um, okay. Which I, I, and so it's and and the, the thing that I do like is that it, it, they uh, they taught me that it's almost like the you know the compulsory exercises in gymnastics or or, or ballet, where if you don't have the foundation, uh, then it's going to be really it's going to be a lot more difficult to to play and even and even write music. So. Um, I learned a lot of that foundation from from playing classical music back in the day, but I had to develop my ear later because I, I had never really done that. I was just reading notes, and, um, and right. you hear people say, you know, a chimpanzee could read notes. <laughs> it's probably true, uh, maybe not with any expression, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it was. Uh, and, and I, you know, I'll meet parents now and, and even grandparents who are like, you know, my my daughter, uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll always ask, does your kid play an instrument? Because I think every kid should, or at least sing in the choir. I'm still and, kick, I still like to kick my mother's ass for not making me teach, teaching me yeah. how to play the piano don't, or don't, forcing don't, me. Don't kick your mother anywhere. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I, I really, I mean, quote unquote, hated my mom because it was just, I missed out on a lot of 
what I thought was a lot of, you know, good times with, you know, throwing the football around. But then you realize that it not only builds, um, and to this day, and you could ask my wife because, I mean, yesterday, I, I, I'll bet I rehearsed for nine hours, you know, and and uh, you, you you get that thing where where everybody wants everything right away now. But if you're, you know, if you're not well rehearsed, um, you, you're really not going to be able to, you're not going to feel comfortable doing what you're doing. And she, and she taught me that, which was I had to spend that time every day. And, and so what I was saying is that with parents and grandparents, they'll say, you know, I, I got my kid piano lessons, but they, but they really didn't, they really weren't digging it. I said, I don't care if you're digging I said, why do you care if they're digging it or not? You need to force them to play. Like, no, I'm not forcing them to play if they don't like it. No, you really need, if it's not that, then they need to be in Taekwondo or they, you know, or they need to, to I don't know, uh, be, you know, in, in chemistry uh, camp or something. But you need, they, they need that feeling of, of, uh, of doing something and, and, and staying with it, sticking with it, so to speak, you know, and so like, oh, I'm not interested in this anymore. I'm going to switch instruments again. Well, I think a passion is good for everybody. Gosh, for, for sure. You know, um, what's I mean, interesting about that statement is that, not to cut you off at, at the knees, is that I've, always, I've even named a bunch, a bunch of my albums, you know, Passion, uh, you know, Grand Passion, Passion Play, and all that stuff, is that uh, I was reading a book recently, um, and I can't, I'll, I'll think of the, uh, I'll think, oh no, it was, uh, oh, it's a great, great book by Ryan Holiday. I did a podcast with him. Um, it's called, um, the book is called uh, Ego is the Enemy, and there's also one called um, The Obstacle is the Way. So he, started, he, he studies the Stoics, and he's gone through and, and looked at how the Stoics relate, you know, relate to the CEOs and successful people today. And he says that, you know, passion is 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 okay, but passion can get you into trouble. And it's gotten me into trouble where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a great idea for a business, right? And then right. and then you create this thing, and it's like there's no business there. Wait, wait a second, I didn't do the research, and it took away from from all the rest of the stuff that I was you know, that I was doing. Um, so you really need to have purpose. You be, if you start with purpose, then you can be passionate about that purpose. But what happens with purpose is that you have to have a roadmap. And I've jumped out of many planes figuratively and tried to build a parachute on the way down. You know, some of some of it works, like you know the our PBS specials, uh, right. music specials, and and also just sort of taking a chance when I was in New York and leaving news and going to sports and then taking a chance, you know, without the sports and leaving for entertainment tonight where I only had like a you know a five week guarantee. Um, but it was, uh, uh, but a lot of times it'll, it'll cause you to, to make bad decisions too. So, yeah. well, you now was, now was your podcast, which is actually, I, I do enjoy it. It's, uh, for everybody that's listening, it's called intelligence for your life, but, uh, this is done with your wife, Connie Salica and your steps on Gabe Gerard. Mm -hmm. And is, is this a, was this a, a passionate thing or was this a, uh, a, a defined business? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. It was, um. Um, I, I, I think it was passion and purpose uh, because, first of all, I love working with my family. I think that the two of them are, are, are really – I mean, Gib can talk about anything. And, um, and Connie is the, is, the, is the voice of reason, and she has been that for me for the last you know, 25 years of marriage. But, Everybody um, needs one of those. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> it's like you need, a, you need a, an accountability partner or you know, a board of directors, if you will. But um, uh, I, I like – see, the, the stuff that I do on the radio – it's never longer, ever longer than two minutes. Otherwise, the stations would go, wait a second, you went too long. We need to play music. So being able to have a, a longer conversation like this one that we're having right now is incredibly valuable. I mean, I'm, I'm on a diet right now, for example, called the ketogenic diet. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the middle of uh, – I was diagnosed with cancer about uh, two and a half years ago, and I've had two operations. And, uh, and so now they found some stuff in my lymph nodes. And so the, the, the protocol is for uh, chemotherapy and what's called androgen deprivation therapy, where they basically suck all the testosterone out of your body, which is really amazing because it's, it's like you're, you're in the twilight zone. Right. And so, and so um, you know, I'm on this, this, this ketogenic diet, and, I, and, and actually Gib and Connie are on it too just to, as, to support. And it's a very difficult diet, but it, it gives you an amazing amount of energy. And if there wasn't – if Dom D'Agostino had not done – um, an interview, a two and a half hour podcast interview with Tim Ferriss, who I know you probably know. Um, yep. uh, I wouldn't be on this diet, and it's and it's you know it, it is a it's an amazing it's a diet that basically just starves cancer cells, and so um, I think that the podcast uh, um, uh, platform is when it's done right is incredibly incredibly valuable. I, the one thing I don't know if it just drives you crazy. What, what drives me crazy is when. Like, like three people on a podcast get together and they spend the first 
six or seven minutes, like, you know, just being goofy and talking about their, what they had for breakfast. And, and, you know, I, that, that makes me, I, I come to the podcast world. I really want to be encouraged or I want to be informed or want to, I want to move from the place I am right now in my life to, a, you know, a, you know, a different place. Um, and, uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't even want to laugh. You know, I know, I know there's so much comedy, but I just really, I really want to learn new stuff. And I think it's, it's sort of like the, I had a conversation about that with somebody uh, the yeah, other day. I said yeah. there's so many that I quick get on a podcast and quick fast forward three, three or four minutes until they get through all the uh, the junk and get to the meat of the thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Let's just let's let's go. Give me the three things or the four things or or, or you know. And Ferris has really done it. He's done a really good job with that because he'll he'll interview like Josh Waitskin, you know, the the, the chess master who was who made the story of. Um, Bobby Fisher was on there, but he, did, he, he, he doesn't just talk about, um, hey, tell me all about being a chess player, uh, your master chess player. It's, it's, um, it's tell me how, how you can use, I can use that to develop a better memory and strategy in my life. You know, that, that stuff's amazing. It's almost like right. you know, you, we, we just never had access to people like that before. It's like walking into a room, you got this dais of, uh, of the smartest people in the world you know, answering your questions. So I just think it's, uh, pe- people always think, you know, in my world and in the radio world, they think, oh, podcast that's a goofy little thing that will never catch on. But it's, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's a great way to get to know somebody, too. Well, well, it was very cool when we called, when we, when we contacted you guys and it was like, well, hey, he's got a podcast. He, he, he'll know what this is all about. Because <laughs> everybody's, because uh, everybody is, uh, you know, not quite sure what it is. Is it radio? Is it, you know, is it recorded? Where, where does it go? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For, you know, for, for sure. And, and I, you know, I just really, like I said, I think it's, I think it's very valuable. And, you know, it, it, it's, as far as me, it's like, you know, what are you, what are you going to talk to John Tesh about? You know, um, the, the, the difference when you were mentioning a, a varied career, the difference between me and most other people is that I, you know, it looks like if you look at my Wikipedia, it's like, Oh, look, you know, he's, he's sold this many records or he did this or did that, did that. Not not in that Wikipedia is how many enormous failures I had, you know, and, and we actually have a, a neighbor, you know, Wayne, Gret- <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, who talks about, you know, it's like, you know. What's, All right, what's I'll the- drop a name on you. I've got a neighbor is Cal Ripken. OK, so I'll, uh, it's even I'll better. See your, I'll see he, I'll, I'll see your Wayne Gretzky he, and raise it a Ripken. Yeah, <laughs> even better, even better. But he's, uh, you know, I, I can't remember the exact quote. If you look it up, it's a, it's a tremendous quote, but it's about, you know, what's the I don't know, what's the key to being the highest scorer in the, you know, in history or something like that. And, and, and he's like, well, you know, I also missed 4,300 shots. <laughs> you know, it's that, there's, there's a lot to that, you know? Um, and so, uh, yeah, if you want, if you want some advice on life, I can, I can tell you everything that I've done wrong and don't do that. <laughs> that's that's going to yeah, be my, I, that's going to be my book. You know, don't do that. Well, I've always found that you learn more from your mistakes than you do from your success. Oh yeah. Yeah. So many. But, yeah. Um, but you know, you, I also want to talk to you a little bit about the Celica Tesh Foundation, and I, I this is kind of interesting because music is very powerful from very young, actually prenatal, neonatal, whatever you want. And my mom had passed away back in 2005, and right in her last years, and she was never very musically oriented, hence I never got my piano lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was very comforting and stimulating to her in the last bit of her life, and that's something that you guys are doing with the Celica Tesh Foundation, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it, the interesting um, research on this, and they're getting more and more, uh, uh, you know, into it. Of course, more and more studies coming out. Is that there's a they've learned that there's a um, the, the part of the brain that's sort of uh, the executive memory part of the brain, which is making decisions, trying to decide whether this is right for you or whether that. That's the executive decision sort of uh, gets lost um, when when you're when you start having um, these tiny TA strokes uh, or or even. You know, dementia and Alzheimer's are, are, are they're, they're related, but they're they are in fact different diseases. Um, and but but with with each one, especially with dementia, where you you know you know you know who your family is, right? Unless it's really really advanced, you know who your family is, but but you can't remember what you've said or what you've done, or you know, or or it is sometimes that's thirty seconds with my mother-in-law. It's like it's about thirty seconds. However, if I go over to that senior home and I play Beyond the Sea or L O V E. Or I play, you know, World on a String. She can sing every one of those lyrics, you know, and because it's a different part of of the brain, and so that's really what our foundation does is we put music into, you know, into senior homes. Not recorded music. It's a whole different thing about the way a live piano and, and voices about how they how they you know they vibrate the air 
and it becomes a talk about passion. It becomes a more passionate thing for for the, the men and women who who are there, and and so recognizing that it's really great. It's really great therapy because they can live in that moment. They're not always worried about am I going to say the right thing? I can't remember this. Can't remember that. I can remember these words to these songs perfectly, and it's just amazing to see that happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, let me lighten it up a little bit before as we wrap up here. And I, I saw a funny video, not a funny, but it was a great video on YouTube. It was a combination of Eric Clapton and Luciano Pavarotti singing Holy Mother. Wow. And yeah, I mean, it was very, very, very weird. Very weird. Very cool. Um, if you were ever to have the chance of performing with another artist or a band uh, and what you do, who would who, who would you do? Um, I'd say it's a pretty easy answer for me because um, I actually just saw them three times um, this you know, over the last six, eight months. Um, I'm a huge Yes fan. Um, and I, I grew up in sort of the you know, progressive rock era. So, so Yes, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Jeff Rotel, okay. you know, all those guys. And, and, and part of the reason is, of course, that especially you know, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer and, and Yes have you know, tremendous uh, uh, legendary keyboard players. And I, I got a chance to, after all these years, you know, I got a chance to meet Rick. Uh, I've known John Anderson and Chris Squire, who just passed away. I've known them for, for years. And um, I, I, I would love to play with them, um, uh, you know, on stage. The problem is I don't think my heart could take it because <laughs> it's like they actually asked me, you know, when, when the band broke up and they just they broke it up so many times, they asked me if I'd be interested. And they, they must not have really known the – the, uh, the um, the scope of my lack of skills, but they asked me if I'd like to come and do a couple of shows because I knew I was a big person. Oh, the rest of the thing, you know, which would have been amazing. But, but if if I, you know, I, I know how to play roundabout, but if I had played that on stage, and if I had and if and if I had missed one note, I probably would have had to put be put in the home listening to uh, Johnny Mathis songs for the rest of my life. <laughs> I, would, I, would have, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made it. But that's that's the the answer is is there's only there's only one answer is is yes because I I just there's song sorry well, I actually don't, been... don't 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 tell anybody but there's a song called um, Heart of the Sunrise that they do and um, there's a uh, there's like a, an eight bar passage and I just realized like maybe two weeks ago that I probably owe these owe these guys some money because theme that i won an emmy for that is every bit that <laughs> that part of the song i'm like oh my gosh i ripped that off i i didn't even know i was doing that so please if you're an, if you're an attorney uh please don't uh, just pretend you never heard this yeah yeah we don't like it we don't like attorneys we don't let them listen to us here so yeah. that's <laughs> that that'll be fine i'll tell you what well let's just wrap it up i mean as a reminder you're going to be here bringing the grand piano live tour to the ram's head on stage this wednesday april 26th um, you can find more about the tour at ramsheadlive.com. If you miss it, you're going up to Sellersville, Pennsylvania after that to the um, Sellersville Theater, which is an awesome little theater since they've redone that. That's sort of where I spent some of my childhood. And then you're going to be back in the area, if you miss them at the Rams Head on the 30th in Alexandria at the Birchmere, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just come, just come follow us. Uh, you know, just we we actually have a couple of people that that, that will they'll come and they'll, they'll get in their cars and they're, they're retired or something and they come see all of our shows. It's a lot of fun. I, I have to change the stories every night just for those guys. It's, it's, yeah, well, you have to say you've got a bunch of Tesh grippies. They're sort of like the Deadheads that uh, <laughs> just not quite the as fervent. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one the one song that we have to play every night, no matter what, no matter whether we want to or not, is um, I have one of those songs actually. Is uh, is the NBA basketball theme. Because uh, that's the one thing that, that anybody you know remembers from me. So we'll be. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw. There's a lot that you need to remember out of you. I mean, you wrote the themes for the Atlanta Summer Summer Games in '96, the Barcelona ones in '92, and then um, you've got Round Ball Rock, which is the NBA basketball theme for NBC that ran for what 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was, uh, and you know, when we get out of this, we'll play this just and everyone be, like, oh my god. No, that yeah, was that I, one. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, sports themes are my favorite. I love the big bombastic. I mean, I've been ripped for 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 writing that kind of music, but I love the big bombastic uh, themes. Uh, and, and the other thing about writing sports music, especially if you're scoring something like the Tour de France, 
is that it forces you to write in odd time signatures, you know, because the, the director may have changed, you know, changed movement, uh, not in 4-4 four, four or 8-4 or 6-8, or, or you know, so you're in a, you're in 11 four, you're in 12 eight, you know, all kinds of different time signatures. So it's really, it's, it's really fun to ex- explore that stuff. And we do that on stage. We, we perform a piece to, uh, to tour de France uh, footage on stage. Well, that sounds great. I mean, so it sounds like a really great multimedia, uh, you know, show that you've got. It's oh, it's just, a uh, multimedia extravaganza. Absolutely. That's the word you were looking <laughs> for. <laughs> how many, how many people are coming in your band with you? I mean, is it just you and the piano and the multimedia or is it? Do no, you there's, a, there's, a... There's, there's, there's three of us. There's my bass player who's been with me, uh, for like 30 years and, and this amazing sax player. Funny thing about the sax player, you know, a lot of the sax players play flute and he does too, is that, um, he, have you ever seen Anchorman? Yes. And you know when Will Farrell goes nuts with the flute for like no reason at all, all of a sudden he just goes crazy. Uh-huh. Um, that flute is played by my flute player. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. There you go. That's that is awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Well, I'll tell you, I will let you go. I you know you've got a flight to get back here, but John, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Uh, safe travels. Have a good flight from the left coast. My and pleasure. Welcome to Annapolis, and we'll see you on Wednesday. It was great fun talking to you. Thank you. Take care. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.